Hello folks, welcome back to the channel, Farm Rainbow Extreme here. Here we are looking at all the new mods that's been released today on the 3rd of April 2024. And yep, yeah, I am late to these mods, that's because as these mods dropped, I had to shoot off out, so... I am currently recording this at half past midnight, half past twelve and that, in the morning, so this should be out within a couple of hours of recording this. But yeah, as always, time taps are down below. And we've got a gem full of mods. So, first of all, we're going to start off with our placeables and all that. So, starting off with, we've got the Double Rod Matte Fence Pack. This is by Modding Association. 5.92 megabytes to download. All of it is one slot. So, yeah, this is a fence pack. So, you've got fences, we've got gates, we've got doors. And you'll find this under build mode. Decorations add fences. Head to the end, and there we go. So, yeah, you got your single door. So, single door goes like that. And then we do have a option of slide gates from 7, 10, and 30 meters. Also, you got an option for fence. So, if you want to create your own deer ship and that, your own yard and that, and you want proper gates and fences, just whack them down like so. I just go and grab another fence, so not for now, just whack that one there. So yeah, we'll go to it. Open the gate. Nice animation, nice rolling sound. But yeah, go to the ones that we placed on the level ground. You do see there are these little rollers, so we've got one, two, and three rollers. So yeah, as the gate opens, it'll just roll along here. Yep, not too bad. Yeah, starting price for the fences are 149. Door is 500. The gate starts off at 7.5 for 7 meters, 13.5 grand for the 10 meters, and 19.5 grand for the 30 meter. And that is the double rod matte fence pack by Mod Association. Next. We've got a pack of wolves. This is by Neumog Mod. 8.86 megabytes to download. One slot for console. And you'll find this under decorations and fences. As with the others we just looked at. So yeah, we got a option for a variety of rules. So we've got a brick wall. We've got a block wall. Got a concrete wall. And then we've got a wall with a fence. And each of these, they do have an option for a gate. And they're pretty much all very similar, if not exactly the same. Yeah, I think, to be honest, these are pretty much all exactly the same. But yeah, nice animation. Nice little level of detail. Two of my brick and mortar buildings, as you know. So yeah, that is the Pack of Wolves by Neumog Mod. Next, we've got the Grain Hall. This is by 750Ti Modding. 9.1 megabytes to download. 12 slots for a console. And yeah, this is a shed that can be used to store grain, vehicles and equipment, or even pallets and bells. Terms with lighting. Light switch is over here. So yeah, circle, turn lights on and off. Do love the sound of the doors. Of course, also got a side door. Same with this side. And light switch is located over here, so turn lights on. Turn lights off. So yeah, you'll find this under build mode, under sheds. And towards the end, there is no colour options or anything. Cost 50 grand and 12 slots goes down to 1. And that is Grain Hall by 750Ti Modding. Next, we've got the Placeable Steel Silo. This is by ER Shoba via VSR Modding Sawyer. This is 8.88 megabytes to download. 5 slots for console. Three slots for the extensions. And yeah, essentially these are silos. 
capacity sorts at a million litres and each of the extensions are 500,000 litres and yep yeah, so you've got the green ones here these are the uh, multi-fruit options and the uh, generic steel are non multi fruit so yeah you can find this under build mode under silos towards the end and yeah it clearly says multi fruit and green solo so you can't get it mixed up no color options or anything like that yeah 20 and 30 grand respectively but yeah 30 grand for a big old soil like that that i love at fairness, I'll be looking for something like this for my Let's Play series on, oh, what's it, Ravenport. But yeah, so you've got your extensions. And yeah, you don't need to toggle free mode to place them together. All you have to do is make sure the ladder section is pointing towards the silo. So yeah, something like that. Oh yeah, if the ladder is the opposite way around, yeah, you do need to toggle free mode then. But yeah, keep the ladder close to the silo. And yeah, without having to enable free mode. And yeah, you can have sapping on as an option if I had this perfectly aligned. So yeah, so there we go. Another one there. But yeah, love the level of detail on that. So you've got some TMR. Got a million years. So yeah, that will go in. And yeah, there we go. Yeah, of course we've got the extension, so it's going to be a bit more than that. But yeah, so that is the placeable steel soil by ER Shabba. Next, we've got the Bavarian Farmhouse. This is by Agrar Modin. 27.02 megabytes of download, available for all platforms, PC, Mac and PlayStation. And yeah, all of these farmhouses are 24 slots for console. Ah yeah, essentially these are farmhouses, can enter them, so yeah, you've got your entrance out the front, your wardrobe is on the sides, so yeah, but I have them a bit close together, especially with all the mods we've got to look at today, yeah, got eight little garages, can't really function, but yeah, nice level of detail, got a little wood storage there, Nice and lovely. And yeah, you'll find this under build mode. Go to buildings and farmhouse. Go towards the end. So yeah, 378,294. Daily upkeep of 173. Size is 21 by 14 meters. And yeah, all of these go down to one slot after you initially place them. So yeah, three different variations, all exactly the same. So yeah, that is the Bavarian Farmhouse by Agrar Modin. Next. Moving on to our more of our animals and that placeables, we've got the Barnwood Pigsty. Once again, this is by 750Ti Modin. 14.43 megabytes to download, 20 slots for console, costs 30,000 and can hold up to 50 pigs. So, got your bar section here. Lighting can be found here. So yeah, toggle light on and off. So yeah, dialer box for your pigs is here. Holds up to 50 pigs. And terms with keep capacities. Head into our animals. So your barn with pig sty can hold up to 10,000 liters of straw and 54,000 liters of food. So yeah, that is the barn with pig side by 750Ti Modin. And yeah, before we go, <laughs> yeah, you can find these under build mode, under animals, and under pigs. So yeah, you can place them down. No color options or anything like that. But yeah, in terms of what can feed in that, all you can see, got variety of grains, corn. Even the new vegetable crops and that, or to buy pig food in bulk. Inputs for everything goes to here. And yeah, you don't have to go right into here. Like, I had straw here, and that the tray was here for the straw and pig food. 
went in with no issues whatsoever. Unlike with some of the other mods we're going to be looking at in a few moments. But yeah, that is the Barnwood Pig Sideby 750Ti modding. Next, we've got the medium sized cow barn. Once again, this is by Agra Mod Modding. 24.42 megabytes to download. 37 slots for console. Ah, yeah, this can hold upwards to 40 cows. Cost 334,691. Daily upkeep of 287. Size is 40 meters by 22 meters. And in terms of capacity, so yeah, dollar box is here. Ah, yeah, in terms of apparently capacity, it says forage, so food is 80,000 liters. However, it says straw is 19,000 liters. And yeah, for some reason, I'm getting 30,000 liters. And we've barely made a dent. Whether or not that's because of the soil extensions. Actually, you can have a little test. Ah, right, so fair enough. Yep, 90,000 years short capacity. And I didn't know that. Like, having soil extensions or whatever so close, or silo, affected the capacity of the straw. But, anyways, in terms of milk, it can hold up to 5,000 liters. 440,000 liters of liquid manure can hold. So yeah, dialog box is here. Surrey output is here. Nice little doors in that animation. I do love as always. Your milk comes out of here. And once again, we have to do really is just get a trailer like close to the door here. And yeah, you'll be fine as golden. Little shelter over here if you ever want to store any bells and that. Speaking of which, these will accept obviously straw and that for bedding. And yeah, straw, bells on its own, it's fine, no issues whatsoever. And with the straw blower, it had, again, no issues with the straw blower. However, I've had two different trailers in. I had the TARDIS trailer and I had a normal trailer in with straw. Try to put straw in here. Would not accept loose straw from a trailer. Again, that could be down to the mods I'm using or the particular trailer I was using, but I recommend straw blowers, mixer wagons, or just bells on their own. The feed weren't an issue in that. But yeah, I do love this, and yeah, I think there's also a little office space, so if we open this, there we go. So you got like different light light switches and that all over the place. So you got light switch for the dairy room. Turn those on and off. But yeah, so it's a dry free ball cow barn. So you got your doors. Love the animation. And of course you've got your gates as well. So yeah, because then cows out if you want to do that a little bit role playing. So yeah, that is the medium sized cow barn by Agra Mod Modding. Next, we've got the Hasten Farm Vogelsberger. Not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. This is by Farmer Five Ton. Thirty five point seven seven megabytes to download. And yeah, this is a little farm pack. Based on some German equipment, based around the late 1800s, early 1900s. And yeah, it's more of suitable for like a 90s area mod, or area map. And yeah, so this contains a farmhouse, sheds, bells, and pallet storage. Asterisks on that, we'll have a look at that in a sec. Pigsty, sheepfold, and it says there's a big shed that can hold. 30 cows. However, setting this up, looking at everywhere I can, I cannot find a cow barn of any sort, so I'm not sure what that is. But yeah, I've got a yeah, few notes on this. So yeah, starting off with, we've got the farmhouse over here. 
This can hold 30 chickens. So yeah, dollar box is here. Just gotta be careful, little collisions out with steps. But yeah, seat trigger is here. Feeding input is here. And yeah, first of all, this looks like this is where eggs spawn. However, looking around, couldn't find no spawn point for eggs. And if you go into our menu, so yeah, Vogelsberger, chickens. Yeah, so 3,000 years of feed, except straw net. But I can't see nothing for eggs. Like, so I don't think eggs are being produced. Maybe needs an update. I'm not too sure. But yeah, so if you got chickens for aesthetics, it's good. But if you want chickens for actually eggs, that then in a way it's useless. So. That is that. Next, we've got uh, the grain storage. And this holds up to 60 million litres. Oh yeah, slot count, so yeah. 12 slots for the farmhouse with chickens. The big shed with grain storage, 29 slots. Yeah, so 60 million litres. This is a non multi fruit, so input is down here, output is through that pipe. Got a little storage area, of course there's a shed. And yeah, with this pack, I do love all the doors and that. Light switch is yeah, somewhere there, just actually triggered it. Yeah, go around to the side, nothing on the side. So yeah, I'll then look through the rest of these and then we'll look at where you place them down. And yeah, this is a same version but rescaled. Again, we'll look at that in a sec. Next, we head to the sheepfold. So, this is 15 slots. Got your dollar box, can hold up to 20 sheep. Your wall comes out of here. And yeah, there's like a tipping trigger here. However, I'm not sure what that is because your bells go to here and your feed goes here. And as you can see, you do need to get the bells quite a bit of the ways in to accept, so if you've got like a skid steer in that or a small tegander or a small tractor, very good in that, very useful. Anything bigger, you're going to have struggles with getting the bells in unless they're liftable. Heading over to the pigsty, got your dialog box here, there we go, trigger it, 15 pigs, and yeah. Don't know why that's here for because yeah, you don't get anything from pigs apart from manure. So yeah, got your bells trigger here, feed trigger here. Once again, lovely door animations, regardless of the little issues with this pack. So yeah, enough around the sides. Yeah, she's like, do love the little levels of details, the beam work and that. Absolute lovely. Next, we've got the bell and pallet storage, or small bell and stable, well, small bell stable storage. So, essentially, this is a bell and pallet storage. However, I've tried some pallets, like eggs and that, could not get them in. So, yeah, it says 250 capacity. However, I think it's only a bell storage, but still, not too bad. But yeah, with the rescale version, I placed nine bells in, and yeah, they don't look <laughs> yeah look a bit out of place. But if you're using the normal version, quote unquote, then yeah, it's fine. So yeah, show same as before. Input is here via the box, and yeah, not too bad. Just to get them in, get them out. It's just here. Oh, we've got nothing there, so let's go and get some of our bells out. So there we go, they came, come out of here like so. Yeah, I thought someone went back in, but no he didn't. So yeah, no eggs from the chickens. Shrew bells only for the animals. So I've tried a variety of traders. Unless you're using like the super dinky tiny traders and that, you may be able to get straw in. 
Otherwise, bells only. And yeah, bell and pallet storage. Just looking at my notes here. Only accept bells. Oh yeah, so slot count as a reminder. So twelve slots for the farmhouse with chicken. The big sheds with storage, both of them are twenty nine slots. For the small bell stable, it is eighteen slots for the normal one, seventeen slots for the rescaled version one. And both pig barn and sheep barn are fifteen slots. And yeah, in terms of capacity, yeah, 3,000 litres of chicken feed, 10,000 litres of food, and I'll say that's about 15,000 litres of straw. So yeah, where do you place them down? So, your pig barn is obviously located here. And you do have a variety of colour options, so that changes all of the doors, so if you don't like blue, go with red, go with a beige, Orange, purple, even. And yeah, got a huge plethora of options. So, yeah, 15 slots goes down to 1. The sheep barn holds 20 in that, except grass and hay goes down to 1 slot. The farmhouse with chickens that's under farmhouse down to the end goes down to one slot and that is wheat, barley and sorghum and for the bell storage and the silo or big shed and silo these are under sheds so yeah the big shed with storage they go down to two slots after placing down bell, the bell stable and that is goes down to one and then lastly, the shed itself. Yeah, so yeah, actually no. That's not here, that's missing. So yeah, the big shed that I looked over here. Cannot find it anywhere. Looked under cows. Nothing's popping up, so... Whether or not that's been forgot to be included in the modern act, I'm not sure how this all works, but... And how I got past testing, but I don't know. Anyway, so slot counts, yep, yep, yep. Oh, yeah, the rescale version. So let's go into our silos and that. So it says there the rescale version is up to 120 or 130% bigger, depending on which one you're going for. But yeah, for example, the bell storage. So you've got your normal one here. And then you got a rescale version, which is 20% bigger. No correction. 30%. No. Not sure which yeah. 20 or 30% bigger. So yeah, it says it's adapted for farm sim or farm sim layer. Which in a way it seems weird. But I sort of get it because the inten intention design is this. However, with tractors, equipment and that, you will be extremely limited on what you can place. And again, in terms of the size of the bells and that, it says it's designed for more of the small, high-dense bells. But yeah, if you want to get these bigger bells in, there is space in that, of course. So yeah, depending on what bells you're going for in that, and equipment and that, again, that affects on whether or not you use the rescale version or the normal version so yeah that is the Heusen farm Vogelsberger and that is almost all of our productions but I'm going to save the metal and gem factory for the end of the episode or end of the mod review next we head on to our equipment we've got, first of all we've got the Lizard Gruber 2.7 this is by Poiscap 5.27 megabytes to download Five slots for console and it's a 2.7 meter working with cultivator. And yeah, you'll find it's under build mode. Oh no, sorry, under tools and cultivators. So your cultivators go down to the end. And yeah, so worn stickers got no or yes. So that just changes the worn stickers on side. 
main color got a variety of old color palettes. So yeah, let's hop into the John Deere. And yeah, we'll start just have a little demonstration. There we go. Get you hooked up. There's no folding options or anything like that. Lower it. So yeah, working speed is 50 kilometers per hour or around about 9 or 10 miles an hour. Requires 80 horsepower. Costs 4,150. Yeah, overall, nice little animation. Simple, not quite a 3 meter conveyor, but almost very close. So yeah, that is the Lizard Gruber 2.7 by Poise Cap. Next, we've got the Lizard U7XX. This is by Koopy. 18.63 megabytes to download. Slot count is 7 for the first cultivator and 5 for the others. We'll show that in a sec. Ah yeah, essentially this is another cultivator ranging from 2.1 meters work width up to 3.6 meters. So yeah, once again you'll find this under tools and cultivators. Ah yeah, so the first of all the U724 and 725. That's the one with some slots, goes down to one afterwards. So yeah, looking at that, got support, no or yes. So it just changes the little supports to that on the chassis itself. Work width, 2.1 meters, 2.1 meters and 48 horsepower requirement. 2.5 meters and 55 horsepower requirement. 2.8 meters and 62 horsepower requirement. 3 meters, 68 horsepower requirement, and back down to 2.1. Main color got a variety of shades of green, so you got a light green, dark green, and a bit of a more of a faded green. So that changes obviously the metal frame. The design color changes the rest of the conveyor on the back, so the little rollers. So you got a variety of greys and blacks. For the Lizard U757R and 757-1R, these are exactly the same, just difference in work width from 3.2 meters with a 75 horsepower requirement to a 3.6 meter work width and a 82 horsepower requirement. All of these work at 9 miles an hour. So you get support, yes or no. Color options is exactly the same. Once again, we'll hop into John Deere. Let's back this up. So yeah, do you have an option to fold? And it does take forever to fold. Still folding. I'm not touching anything. And there we go. <laughs> yeah, it takes forever to fold. So let's unfold this and have a look how it functions. There we go, got it unfolded, so zero so this. Drive along. Nice little animation now, they sort of like, not quite bubbling up the soil gnat, but overall, not too bad, not too shabby, as you expect from a 2 to a 3.6 meter work with cultivator. So yeah, that is the Lizard U7XX by Koopy. Next, we've got the Coretta Trader. This is by Nicolat at Voidix. 2.58 megabytes to download, three slots for a console, and essentially this is a very cheap and old style logging trader. This can be found under tools and forestry equipment. So yeah, three slots goes down to one. Cost just one and a half grand, not too shabby. No color options. Does support tension belts. So you've got your three, like so. And also you've got two going entire across the width or length, depending on how you're looking at it. And yeah, I've got a couple of bits of wood loaded up. Not too bad, but of course, where it's a single axle, does like to tip in that. Personally, I recommend. Two to three meter width or length logs. 
you can go bigger than that, but depends on the weight distribution. But yeah, simple little old styled small log trader, so definitely find this useful on a survival challenge esque kind of series. But yeah, so that is the Creta Trader by Nicolette and Voidex. Next, we've got the Lizard Moshka Duo, not sure I'm pronouncing that right. Five slots for console, and yeah, you can find this under Surrey Tanks. And essentially, this is a distributor for your Surrey or Digestate. It's got a 12 or a 30 meter worker width. And yeah, you can find this under Tools and Surrey Tanks. Go towards the end 7,800. Slot count is 5, goes down to 1, weighs 1 1.3 tons. Work speed of 10 miles an hour. No color options, no configurations besides the license plate. So yeah, simply that is a distributor. So let's hop into our John Deere. So let's go and get this hooked up. If I can get this aligned. There we go, back it up. There we go. So yeah, got it hooked up. And of course you've got your application rates and that. But for this, we're looking at R1 and L3. So you've got a 12 meter work width. Press L3. Goes to a 30 meter work width. So yeah, let's go and just start dumping. So yeah, sort of waves in the air and that just dumps your Surrey and digest it. And then go and fold it back up for a 12 meter work width. And then it acts just like that. So again, depends on the size of the farm, the size of your fields and what you prefer. You can have a 12 meter or a 30 meter work width. So yeah, that is the Lizard Moshka Duo by Dyson Agri at NicoDu55. Next, from one fertilizer spreader to another kind, we've got the Amazon ZGB pack. This is by Di Foyser and, oh sorry, Di Foyser Frundi. I knew I mispronounced that, I do apologize. 12.84 megabytes to download. Slot counts is 11 and 10 slots respectively, we'll look at that in a sec. And yet essentially these are two fertilizer spreaders, the Amazon ZGB and ZGB XA. Slight difference, variations. And yet, these are very similar to the ones we got at base game. However, these are more detailed in a lot of ways, including more configurations. And has the ability for bigger capacities, so... You'll find these under tools and fertilizer spreaders. So you've got your similar base game version, 40 meters, 11 meters, well sorry, 40 meters and then miles an hour and that. But then you've got these, which are very similar to the bridles. And actually, actually no, they actually are the same as the bridles, just a Amazon branded version, my correction. So yeah, 45 grand and 70 grand. For the smaller one, that is 11 slots. For the bigger one, that is 10 slots, funny enough. So yeah, 50,600 litre capacity, 80,900 litres of extension. Got variety of wheel brand options, narrows and wide standards. All the same for all of the manufacturers of tyres. Ladder, no or yes. So that changes ladders on the side. So yeah, usually these are 12 meter work widths. Like with the bridles, you do have a 6 meter spreading unit. So you can have that, yes or no, cost an extra 8 grand. Main colour, we've got shorts, green and orange. And all that changes is the hub colour. Doesn't change the body in that. And then you've got your rib cutter, you've got your swart smat, your grout or groove, not sure how I'm pronouncing that. 
And yeah, similar here in terms of color options. So yeah, wheel hub and room colors. Same spread of units. 11 meters we're working with, or oh, sorry, 11 miles an hour. Small one holds 9 to 14,000 euros, and this could be a. Uh, what's it? Lime spreader or a fertilizer spreader. So let's go and just hop into the lime one. So, yeah, if you're used to the bridle systems, then you know exactly what these do. But, yeah, short demonstrate. There we go. Apply in some lime. And yeah, overall, yeah, about the same as average in terms with the displacement rate. And yeah, that is the Amazon ZGB pack by Dai Fleischer and Frundi. Again, I do apologize about butchering that. Moving on to our traders. First of all, we got the Randon Bashkalanti 2000. This is by Solutions Modding, 9.23 megabytes to download, 8 slots for console, costs 45 grand and holds 30,000 years. And yeah, you'll find this under Tools and Traders. Go towards the end. So yeah, this is a relatively small but still cheap uh, fifth wheel trader. Extension's got original or antique wood, we'll look at that in a sec. Bat stickers got no or yes, so little stickers and that on the main frame. Main colour changes your main body. Got your base game palette and a unique off customised colour options. So yeah, main colour changes the body. Chassis, let's go with a yellow, changes that. Fenders, let's go with a blue, changes that. Cover, as you expect, changes that. And then that's the ring colours. Let's go with a nice hot pink. <laughs> oh, I do like these colour options, like how you could just do a mishmash. But yeah, so 30,000 year capacity, weighs 5.8 tonnes. No options for tyres in that. So let's hop into our Volvo. But yeah, very simple in that. Do love the actual level of detail. So yeah, got cotton. In terms with tipping, there's no tip side options in that. It's just as it is. So there we go. Unload the cotton. Do love the little hydraulic actions. Door flaps open. Decent displacement rate. So yeah, that is the Randon Bush Galanti 2000 by Solutions Modding. Next, we've got the Lizard 2 Axle Trader. This is by 4D Modding Area Agri Modding. 27 megabytes to download. Slot count is 22 slots, which seems high, but Again, this is 4D modded, so as you expect, this is a well detailed trader, which we'll look at in a sec. So yeah, once again, you'll find this under Tools, Add, Traders. Head towards the end. And yeah, somewhere here, we should find it. There we go, 2 axle trader. Capacity ranges from 22.7 thousand years to 38.5 thousand years. For your grain traders, you can go up to 29,000 litres. But this also has a size trader option. So yeah, for your size traders and that, you do have the slidage extension design. So you've got a mesh design, slide design, mesh and catch board, slide and catch board, and then yeah, back to mesh and that. So yeah, let's keep it simple, a 6 foot 6 grain trader. Oh yeah, varieties of configurations and that, terms with capacities and that. So yeah, BKTs, got a variety of options. Again, I'm not going to go through everything because, or say everything because, yeah, I'll be losing my voice at this rate. 
Versteins for that pros, five sixties, six twenties, Michelin's cargo X bibs, Trinoborg, Twin Forestry, or radios, and then you got your BKTs reversed, treads, and yeah, just a variety of options. So yeah, really looked at that. Catwalk, we've got standard or yes. So that is your catwalk there. Ladder options, we've got no or yes. Brake option, we've got added ABS brake. So sort of, in a way, sort of swaps the brakes from locking up or uh, yeah, anti-lock brakes. I think that's the first time I've seen that on a mod here on FS22. Maybe on some other 4D modern trailers, but starting outside of 4D mod, I've never seen a ABS brakes trader, or at least as a option at least. But anyways, light package got a variety of options, and yeah, this goes up to 14. Also, there is a pin hook attacher, so you can. Do a tandem train setup if you wish. So yeah, lighting goes up to 14. Again, it's all little variation details, little bits of LEDs here and there. Nice bit by 4D mod, and these are very high designed. Mud flaps, got standard. Shashi mud, shashi mud flaps, rear body mud flaps, front body mud flaps, all body mud flaps, all mud flaps, and back to standard. Drawbar options, we've got standard, a swivel hitch, and back to standard. No, I absolutely hate swivel axle trailers and that, and swivel hitch just reminds me of that. Toolbox, we've got yes or no. Main body colour, variety of colour palettes, so orange changes the main body. Extension colour is obviously the top. Options color. Let's go with a red. So that changes the ladders and that, and just all the extra options we have added. And then rim colors. So let's go with a nice hot pink as always. Changes the rims. So yeah, let's go and grab our John Deere sec. So yeah, let's go and have a little look here, shall we? Go. Let's get you attached. So your lights, decent. Left indicators, right indicators. We do have an option to unfold or not. And all that does is the toolbox here. So yeah, that's what it does. I think just the toolbox. So let's go and just dump it here. Nice little dumping animation. Opens the flaps and that, and then tips it. And in terms with tipping options, we've got tip side back, green door, and that is it. So let's go with green door. So let's go and unfold that. So yeah, just still chucked it a little bit out of the back. And actually, that sound of it, that's actually a quite good sound. So yeah, that is the, these are two axle trailer by 4D modding, every agri modding. Next, we've got the Lizard Green Max 3125. This is by JD Modern Org. Slot count is six slots, and this is a Orgo Wagon. So it finds on all go wagons towards the end can hold 30,000 litres, 140 horsepower requirement. And terms of what it can hold is just basic stuff like your seed, fertilizer, and basic crops. So yeah, six lots goes down to one. Wheel brand, we've got Michelin standard and white, Mita standard, BKT white and standard, Trailerborg standard and standard two. And then back to Lizard and that. Main colour, so you got a special red or your basic colour palette, so orange. 
Design color changes the cover, and rim color changes the rims. So yeah, let's hop into our little John Deere, hook you up. Oh yeah, so open cover, yes or no. I do like that. Pipe out. Yeah, love the animation in that, as always. Oh yeah, just simply dump it into another trader. Decent displacement rate, not the fastest, also it's very standard in that. But yeah, apart from that, nothing else to complain, to mention. So yeah, that is the Lizard Grand Max 3125 by JD Mods. On to our final equipment for the day. We've got the Lizard PC8M. This is by, once again, JD Modern Arg. This is 5.61 megabytes to download, slot count is 5. And yeah, essentially this is a belted Orgo wagon. So yeah, you'll find this under tools and belts. Go towards the end. So yeah, 8M, so I guess that's 8 meters in length. Main colour, you got orange and your basic colour palette. Design colour, let's go with the blue. That changes the main tube itself. And then you've got your rim colours, which changes the rims. So, obviously, as always, you can attach it to a tractor or drive it yourself. And actually, I do like the engine. Like, actually, it's like a little two-stroke engine or something like that. It's a little old engine like that. I do love those. So, yeah, L1 and X extends and retracts the drawbar. And then L1 and right stick up and down, or left and right, sorry. Raises and lowers the pipe. L1, R1, got an option to unload. R1, nothing. So, yeah, let's go and put some soybeans in. So yeah, it goes and unfolds, or unloads, right, does it hold anything? So internal capacity is 500, yeah, 500 years, so yeah, it can hold 500 years in itself before you need to displace it somewhere. So yeah, actually, yeah, top speed, 6 miles an hour, front or, well, so yeah, going forward or reverse. If they so well, again, I say so, it's very standard and that's not thing unrealistic. But yeah, it sort of can do grain, could do others and that. Can it unload from the ground, I wonder? My answer would be a no. Much no. My correction. It can pick up from the floor, so smack me sideways, call me or whatever. So yeah, you can pick this up from the ground, or pick this up from the ground if you wish. Not too bad little auger there, it has redeemed itself in a way. Decent little mod, so yep. Yeah. That is the Lizard PC8M by JD Modern Arc. Next we'll move on to our two vehicles for the day. And first of all we've got the John Deere Seminar Series 2020. This is by Dins. 20.43 megabytes to download, 34 slots for console. And yeah, this is the same as his 8R series he released the day before. So yeah, if you're aware of that mod, you know what this will hold, and... Yeah, I do love this. So, normally it's 285 horsepower. Gearbox, you got auto power. E23. So yeah, auto power, E23. E23 right hand reverser. Auto Power Command Pro. Uh, yeah, it's got a variety of options. And it goes all the way up to 300. And I think it's 73. Or is it free? Yeah, 388 actually, sorry. It's yeah, from 285 to 388. And that cost will be an extra, what, 50 grand? Have a look here. So yeah, 55 grand for the max horsepower. Roll brand's got standard, standard two, standard three, wides, wides two. 
Not sure if notification popped up in recording, but yeah. So yeah, missions, will waits, will waits two, waits three, wise waits, wise waits. Yeah, so yeah, it's got a variety of different options. I ain't gonna go through everything. We're twins, twins. Again, variety of options and chonkiness of the tires. Twins twos, twins three, twins four, narrows, rear twin narrows, narrow twins, and back to standard. Ah yeah, it's gonna be the same pretty much for yeah, everything else. With the exception of BKT, it's got your twins, rear twins, wide with weights, wheel weights and that. So yeah, it depends on the size and that and yeah, weights are pretty much relatively standard. So yeah, pretty much that is it. Starfire got no or yes, so just a little aesthetic like GPS system. So you got your holder on the top roof, and then you got your 6000, 6000 GS 4640. Does that do anything in the cab? Slight changes to the displays and that. Got your RTK display. Oh uh, yeah, just a variety of options, so once again, a very detailed John Deere mod. Additional equipment, we've got standard, electronic bonnet opener, footrest, both options, signature edition, standard, so no Agri-Technica edition, not too bad. Lights, got standard, LED, and back to standard. Display, we've got the 4600. GS Plus, GS Add New Gen Corner Display, and yeah, back to the 4600. Radio, we've got Standard Add New Gen Radio. Additional lights, we've got Standard, two on the top, eight on the bottom, or both. Gosh, I do like that, like the extra, extra lights and that. They look weird, but they also look quite nice. Seat controls, standard, add multifunctional joystick. Fenders, narrow, standard back, wide back, wide back two, narrow back in front, standard back in front, wide back in front, wide back in front two, narrow back, and standard back in that. Exhaust and warning signs. We've got short exhaust, long exhaust, with, with and without the warning signs. Front mounting, so yeah, we've got no weight. Going up to 1.15 tons or 1,150 kilograms. Got your three-point linkage, three-point linkage with the PTO shaft, and back to no weights. And Gen 2 got no or yes. And yeah, I'm not sure what. Is it changes anything? I guess it's just like a, is a model version. Of that can't see nothing. Oh yeah, just Gen 2 decal there on the bonnet. Seats got standard or leather. And you got your license plate option. And yep, yeah, so turn off, so in the cab, L1, R1, right stick. Okay, we need to turn the engine on, fair enough. Does the seat. Do love this. I'm not sure what the four options I've got, but yeah, I just do love the sound of this. No adjustable suspension like the 8R series. Nice little meaty engine roar. Lights. Got all the lights. That's what I just love that sort of like air braking sound. Let's go forward and break. <laughs> yeah, I do love that. Oh, that is a beautiful sound. It's like very realistic, very detailed in that. So yeah, that is the John Deere 7 Series 2020 by Dines. Next, on to our final vehicle of the day. This is the Monster Truck. This is by JM Garcia. 45.26 megabytes to download, 23 slots for console, and yeah, essentially 
This is a monster truck based on the famous Monster Jam Grave Digger. Of course, for console and that, you can't have the Grave Digger option, which is an absolute shame. But anyways, you'll find this under Vehicles and Cars. Go towards the end. 198 grand initially. 2,000 litre fuel capacity, so you ain't gonna run out of fuel anytime soon. Top speed of 93 miles an hour, weighs 9.1 tonnes. Uh, with the winch option, you can tow up to 15 tons. So yeah, wheel brands, Michelin's, got a variety of options. So you got cargo and your Max. BKT's got your Earth Max SR, Forest Deck, Rider Max FL693M. So that's flotations, and back down to your Earth Max. Mitas, we got the Agriterra 04. HC3000R. Ah, yeah, New King's got your Forestry King F2. Ground King, Try 2, and your Forestry King back to that. Trailer Board got your T404s and 421s. So, yes, I really like your SWs, I think. Not sure. Fredersteins, we've got the Endurian. Flotation Pro. Flotation Track. Actually, I do love those. I'm back down to your Endorian, whatever it is. And yeah, back to Michelin's. Radiator's got Radiator 1 or Radiator 2. And I think that changes the Radiator. No, is that the front? I think it is. Oh, yeah, so yeah, Radiator 1 and Radiator 2. Flags. You can have flags on it, so you got your country, so let's go from right across. So you got Spain, Germany, USA, France, UK, Argentina, Australia, Austria, Belgium, Brazil, Canada, Czech Republic, Chile, Croatia, Denmark, Slovakia, Slovenia, Finland, not Ferland, Hungary, Ireland, Italy, Japan, Norway, Netherlands, Poland, Portugal, Romania, and Russia, Serbia, South Africa, Sweden, Switzerland, Ukraine, Mexico, Peru, Quebec, and got your skull option, giant sulfur option, and your farm similar 22 option if you wish. Exhaust points got model 1, model 2, so yeah, that changes on site. Depends on what you prefer. Hitches, you got your Ford front 3 point link hitch. Got a rear option with a PTO shaft. Got a just a trailer option if you wish. Front and rear, front and trailer or none. With the winch system, which I guess requires the premium, yeah, platinum expansion, sorry. The first one with the Silver and Forests. So yeah, which got no or yes. So let's go with everything, let's get everything all there. Front lights got white, yellow, aqua, or blue, or sky blue, navy blue, coral, uh, fuchsia, or, yeah, I'm not going to say F-U-C-K, sure. orange, purple, red, dark red, turquoise, I do love the red and turquoise, to be honest. Green, lime green, olive green, white, yellow, and yeah, back to aqua and that. Rear lights, we've got, let's go back to here. So you've got your one spotlight, three spotlights, or none. Color tools, you've got original, original matte, chrome, pearl white sand, grey sand, poison green sand, Biscuit, Olive Sand, John Deere Green, John Deere Yellow, Citadel Sand. So yeah, that changes your linkages. Changes, ah uh, yeah, that and your winch. So you got Grey Gloss, Green Gloss, and that. New Age. And Aged. And I think, yeah, back to Sand. So yeah, varieties of options and textures, and your gloss and that. But anyway, so your bezel colour wheels, so let's go with red, 
that changes the on the bezel of the rims. Seat cutter is like the fabric material, so you've got ocean fabric, red fabric and all that. Let's go with a pistachio fabric. Cutter cover, so we've got a huge section, so let's go with purple on there. Cutter chassis one, let's go with the aqua turquoise-ish or Tiffany blue. Chassis two, let's go with a nice hot pink. So yeah, chassis, uh, chassis 2 is like your hubs, your differential, and yeah, part of your lower frame in that, and your drive shafts, your hydraulics, so let's just go with the blue. So yeah, that's your hydraulic suspension, and your hydraulic suspension, and then that's the, you've got your rim cutter, so let's go with a car perfection 1. So yeah, we've got one option here with a flag. <laughs> Just hear that as a proper monster jam sound. Flag does wave about in here if you wish. Let's hop into this one here, a customized color. <laughs> I love that. See so yeah, L1, nothing. R1. Total steering mode, L1, R1, nothing. So yeah, steering, got wheel steering, left and right there. Front wheel steering, turn steering, so that's your rear steering. Crab left, crab right, and back to your wheel steering. And yeah, this baby can climb anything. So yeah, we've got a little test for it here. Obviously, you can climb this no issues, but say, see a partial here, hill climb, full power. <laughs> but yeah, this goes up to 106, 100 revs, so 10,000 revs. And yeah, so pick up and go. Not sure how this is going to cross on the audio, but. But yeah, this is absolutely nice. So what I'm going to just do now is just do a little quick drive around, and yeah, just be in awe of the sound this makes. It's absolutely beautiful. Oh, so yeah, let's turn that off a sec. So yeah, oh, that, yeah, lovely sound. So yeah, lights, got yes and no. Turn them on as you wish. Got your train horn. So yeah, that is the Monster Truck by JM Garcia. Next, we're gonna head to our Gem to the Gem model of the day. We're onto something absolute beautiful and an absolute nice. Definitely on par with the monster truck in terms of being mod of the day. This is the Metal Ant Gems production by Superfly1842. It is 24.25 megabytes to download. And yeah, as in name, Metal Ant Gem production. So from this, you can produce from stone. Get a bit of pay dirt if you wish. From there, you can get silver, gems, diamond, or gold. And yet, from here, you can convert it into jewelry, a golden cat statue, and silverware. So, this also contains some equipment. So, we've got some XL tools here. We've got a Tanker trailer, we've got a buy point and a sell point over there. 
So yeah, we've got a buying station, which is at a increased cost of, I think it's 30% for the stones. So yeah, essentially, go from left to right. Because yeah, this is a lot to take in, and I'll go through as detailed as possible. So yeah, this is going to be your stone quarry, so... Yeah, I can't find a, you know, like a spanner box. And this is this one up here. And she put this down. Let's go into our productions tab. So, for yeah, for your quarry with this, you can produce stones just in thin air. Zero to five hundred, two hundred and forty cycles per month. Apologies, there. I had to do some quick math. So, yeah, starting off with, you can get stone quarry out of thin air. And yeah, in terms with 500 times by 240, that is 120,000 litres of stones a month you can get from thin air. Of course, as part of the mod description, it goes into detail of how you can use this for role playing that. In terms with like a quarry net, you can landscape this into the hill size if you wish. And yeah, you can do so much with this mod. But, anyways. With the stones, from there you can then process that for pay dirt. So yeah, from this you can produce 216,000 years of pay dirt a month. And yeah, in terms of usage of water is 48,000 years, so about nearly half of the maximum capacity here. From the stone wash plant, we'll look at slot counts in a sec, and then from here, you can produce gold, silver, diamonds, and gems. Like, seriously, you can produce all of these if you wish. It does require a little bit of diesel, but to be fair, it doesn't require much. And then, yeah, the gold, silver, and gems can be used down the road for other productions, not for the jewelry production. You do get gems as, not as like a waste product, but as a product of high value on its own. And I do mean high value, like seriously you can get 50 grand a month just with this setup alone, from diamonds alone, not including the other productions. So yeah, actually I think before we go into full detail of this, in terms of cycles and that, and because I've done the calculation of how much you need a month. So yeah, I'm going to go back to this in a sec. Slot counts and that. So, in terms with equipment in that, as part of this, you got the stone quarry itself. That is 31 slots for console. You've got the wash plant, which is 10 slots. And then you've got a tanker here, which is 5 slots. We'll look at that in a sec. And then, yeah, we've got the metal and gem refinery, that is 42 slots. And we got the jewellery production over here, which is 40 slots. Part of this map comes with a cell point, which is 2 slots. A stone buying station, which is, yeah, buy stone at 20 or 30% more price. And that is 3 slots for console. And if we go down here, so let's go to our mods. Select our metal and gem production. So yeah, you got a tanker trader and it is 46,080 litres. And funny enough, that is half of what uh, the wash plant requires. So yeah, 92,000 net. So yeah, nothing special about it. It's literally just half of the max capacity of the wash plant. And then to transfer everything over, you do have options for wheel loaders, front loaders, and telehandler buckets that can transport the gems, the pay dirt, and all that. And yep, yeah, so standard is 1000, 2640, and 3500 liters. Color options is a nice little black or your base game palette. And for each of these, these do have a Unreal capacity options. So, for example, the wheel bucket, wheel loader bucket, 7,000, 10,500, and 21,000. 
So yeah, all it does is just doubles and doubles and that again, or adds an extra 2,000 here and there. Take under bucket, 2640, 5,000, say 500 or 10,000. And a good thing about these buckets, you can use these on just your normal that's plays in that. And yeah, when they're filled up, when using the Unreal Capacity version, there is no like active weight, so like I have like 10,000 litres of lime on this with no weight, and yet yeah, wasn't you know like going heads down or head face down in that. But yeah, slot count so the wilder bucket, which is here, that is two slots, goes down to one, and then for the front loader, add 800 buckets. That is one slot each. So, if we look at the one, look at that slot count. So, we've looked at just in general. But now, I've done some quick math. So, yeah, in terms of recap, we can produce 120,000 litres of stone a month. That, in itself, following the production here, could produce 216,000 litres of pay dirt, requires 48,000 litres of water. So, yeah. From the pay dirt, remember we got 260,000 litres from this one wash plant. Personally, if you go with all three of these, I do recommend two, and I'll explain why. Well, simple reason is because of the amount you can have. So, from here, you can produce gold, silver, or gems. So, for the gold, that requires at most, this is I'm looking at the maximum per month here, so bear with me. This is 144,000 litres of pay dirt required at most per month. Didn't do the water and diesel, so take that as you wish. But yeah, from that 144,000 litres of pay dirt, you can get 9,600 litres of gold per month, 2,400 litres of silver, 768 litres of diamonds and 80 litres of gems per month. For the silver, that requires at most 60,000 litres of pay dirt a month and that produces 28,800 litres of silver. From that you get 1,920 litres of gold, 346 litres of diamonds and 1,440 litres of gems per month. And then lastly, we got the gems. So this requires 33,600 litres a month. From that, you can get 15,360 litres of gems, 2,400 litres of silver, 960 litres of gold, 240 litres of diamond per month. So from there, you can either sell these as it is, we'll cut sell prices in a sec. But personally, again, I want to do more testing on this in terms of do like a full spreadsheet, but this is the quick gist of it. So yeah, going down, in terms of what is the most profitable in that, so in terms of the jewellery production, that requires 3,600 litres of gold and silver, and 7,200 litres of gems per month. So yeah, if you want to keep this at optimal I recommend personally I'll say two of the refineries four wash plants and stones you can get them for cheap if you wish but yeah I'm looking at optimization this is just a simple mod review invoice so so yeah gold production that requires 7200 use of gems so at optimal you can get 14,000 and 400 litres of jewellery per month. For the Golden Cats, this requires 3,600 litres of gold, 1,200 litres of gems, and from that, you can get 4,800 litres of Golden Cat statues per month. And then lastly, for the silverware, ain't much. 9,600 litres of silver gets you 9,600 litres of silverware. So, in terms of prices. So, if goes to your prices, so... Gold, you should be at the bottom, but because I'm on No Man's Land, we do have gold already on map. 
terms with sale prices, yeah, nothing over the top. And yeah, at most you get twenty eight thousand yeah, twenty eight thousand if you wish per month. Or oh, sorry, sorry, twenty eight thousand per thousand years. But yeah, we'll look at that later on. But yeah, so going back down here. So yeah, you've got your silver worth at most 1,140 liters. Diamond, remember, we're only getting like a couple of hundred liters here and there, depending on what production we're using. But for a thousand liters, you can get 49,612 pounds, dollars, euros a month for a thousand liters. For jewelry on its own, 4,966 per thousand liters. Golden Cat, just under 10 grand. Silverware, just over 2,500. Gems, just under 2,000. And pay dirt on its own is worth 220 liters, or sorry, 220 per thousand. And yeah, this is a very simple overview. Now I'm going to do a separate video on this. But yeah, so in terms of what we just looked at, in terms with maximum outputs and that, what you can do at best, so if we go back into our productions, so yes, go and turn everything on, so yeah, you distribute in and that, distribute just for the heck of it, and for these we are distributing, storing and distributing, storing, turn these on, so yeah, once you're at the end of the road, what is most profitable? On the premises off, you got everything kept at 100% capacity in terms with 100% optimized, I mean. For the jewelry, at peak price, you get 71,510 per month. That's that peak price though. For the golden cat, you get 47,500 per month. For silverware, just under 25,000. And yeah. So terms with the amount of hay dirt you get from one of these wash plants, I recommend going to the gold and silver because from these two you'll get 1,100 liters of diamonds per month and at peak price of what was it just over 49 grand you can get 54,500 per month. Of course, is that peak price and that, and I know I'm going over this so quickly, so fast, I will do a separate video at some point. But anyways, let's go and skip some time a little bit, and see what we get at the end of it. There we go, skip the time a little bit and that, and yeah, I just thought, just get some spawn in that, in terms of what we can get, so... Got your delicious pay dirt here. You got your gems, which, I mean, that is absolutely uh, beautiful. The next, you got your silverware, they weigh 1.2 tons, 2,000 litre pallets. For your golden cat statues, they weigh 1.2 tons and 1,000 litres. And then you got your jewellery, which is nicely packed into these nice little neat boxes. See if I can read right in. Gemstone creations, fine jewelry craft. So, yeah, a thousand liters weighs 640 kilograms. And yeah, from gold and silver. Now. And yeah, just small correction here before we go, as I was doing the thumbnail. So, yeah, actually, the gold, silver, and diamonds, ooh, shiny diamonds, do spawn on site. You'll find these here. So we've got your main building here, and these can be found at the back, right here. So this is where all your gold in that is all stored. You even have like liftable gold bars. You've yeah, got a light switch here and that as well. A little pallet in that you can move and chuck about. So yeah, just I thought it would be a little quick addition because that was something I missed. I do apologise, but yeah. A lot of money and yeah this is just like the mess I've had to create over here just in terms of these pallets and I completely forgot and I do apologize on how you place these so mentioned slot counts already 
And yeah, all these are under build mode. Towards the end, so yeah, got all of your stone quarry in that. Osh, 145 grand. Metal and gem refinery, 95 grand. 75 grand for the jewelry production. And yeah, like some of these buildings over here do have nice little bits of details. So you've got lights turned on and off. It's only really noticeable at night. But yeah, over here into the jewelry production. You've got a nice little office. Got a light switch. Got your trigger nut here. Got another light switch. Open the door. Out this way. Do have stairs in that and Ooh, look at that. And me like you very much. I like a yeah, little storage area. <coughs> Turn lights on. So yeah, overall, not too bad and I don't know how long this video is gonna be. Again, I do apologize, I just want to give everything its best to look at. And yeah, it's currently half past two in the morning now, so yeah. Now on to the map tours. I'll edit this, gets uploaded. So yeah, this will be up in about an hour and a half times for me finishing this. And then yeah, I'll crack on the map tours and that, have a cup of coffee, get them up before the morning, hopefully. But anyways, we have finally come to the end of the mod review. And as always, if you enjoyed this Feel free to comment down below. If you want to share some, please be my guest. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet, then please consider. But for what you to do, hope you're gonna stay. But for now, it's me from Evo Extreme, and I'll see you all very soon.